Доброго дня, шановні. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. We start our working day with a series of uh, press briefings, and the first topic is humanitarian assistance and charity in Ukraine. We'll talk to Nazar Mukhachov, uh, leader of the 2600 of Maidan, and also Yuri Kovalchuk, Sergeant Chief Coordinator of the Medical Center in the Kiev State Administration during Maidan, founder of the Charity Fund Heroes of the Nation. You can take your copies of the schedule while entering the room and also follow the changes on our page in Facebook. And uh, so the floor is given to Nazar Mukhachov, leader of the 2600 of Maidan. Good afternoon. The topic of my presentation is not humanitarian assistance and charity in Ukraine, but rather the general situation that we have in Ukraine. And the situation is terrible. The problem is that we cannot openly say this, but the uh, time has come when we cannot no longer cover the facts and situation that we have. All the attention is now focused on the east of Ukraine, and this is very topical, and it is very uh, clear with the foreign enemy, but the domestic enemy is even more scary because they have occupied almost everything that could be occupied, and the fight against the domestic enemy became what made people come to the Maidan. And this internal enemy is the clan and oligarch system that was created and coordinated by Leonid Kuchma. But of course, during the process, uh, Kremlin also took part in the formation of this system. So this clan, having waited for some time, has uh, started to renovate itself, to restore itself. This we see in the distribution of offices, in how the business works, and what's happening in the East. In order to understand the picture in the East, you should talk to field commanders, not to official uh, not to officials, and in reality, the main part of battalions do not trust the general staff at the moment. How can they trust it? Uh, let's take the minister of uh, of uh, the of defense, who is now hiding together with Yanukovych in Russia. This is a tragic picture. Maidan and people all over the country have come out in order to change the system, but this change of the system did not take place. And in reality, the cementing of the system takes place. And uh, it is internal enemy who cements the system, and the internal enemy is the main reason for what's happening in the East. Without such a support, you know, the number of losses after the escape of Yanukovych, 45 days uh, elapsed before some cadre changes have personal changes started. The general stuff is not working normally, and the system of uh, supply does not work. There is a lot of budget for the army, but our guys do not have even body armor, and the system is self-replicating, and a man, a person, even with clean ideas, when they find themselves inside the system, they have to adjust to the system, otherwise they are being pushed out. And those who do not want to change, you know, they are being asked to leave the system or being pushed out. I uh, sensed it, I experienced it myself through my work as a uh, advisor to the secretary of the National Council for, Sel for Defense and Security. And when I started to delve into anti-corruption activity and reform, my cooperation with Mr. Parubi uh, ended. I'm one of the co-founders of the movement Territorial Communities of Ukraine, which has uh, assembled high class experts in uh, law and also artists and painters. It was uh, supported by the 1st of December initiative, Brothers Kapranov, 
one of the creators of the constitution, Victor Musiaka, and other people. The movement is actually nationwide, but it is uh, considered now that territorial communities exist, but from the point of view of our legislation and from the point of view of the European Charter on Local Self-Government, our territorial communities were not created in a legal way. So if they were created in a legal way, they would be legal entities of public law, and we would have the entire property on the territory of territorial communities belongs to them, just like uh, resources and plants and land. We would have have a would have had a uh, transparent budget and an open register of uh, owners and decisions of direct action that are limited only by the constitution. So if the territorial community on their territory adopt a decision within the framework of the constitution cannot be cancelled or appealed against, all the oligarchs do understand what territorial communities is. And that's why they are putting brakes on this reform. And even now, the journalists do not uh, conscientiously inter uh, display any interest and the renewed Vice meeting uh, assembly on the Maidan one of the blocks of one of the assemblies were the uh, territorial communities and uh, journalists of all the channels came to talk to me they took the text of the resolution that was passed on to the presidential uh, administration but there was no mention of it in uh, any media and the journalists are of course uh, falsely covering the events because the owners of the media have not changed so this internal enemy damages everything and the current authorities are as much in fear of the people as the previous one and they do not want to allow people to take power in their hands they talk about decentralization suggested in the constitutional amendments of suggested by uh, poroshenko but it, it really destroys territorial communities they replace groups of people with administrative and territorial unit so only elections remain as a means of influence but according to the current constitution the territorial community can affect its uh, authority directly or through the bodies of local self-government this is a fundamental reason that we do not talk about it is very important that this uh, problem is covered and highlighted and we're working with everyone who contacts us but among from from among the powers that be no one wants to talk to us about territorial communities except uh, mrs uh, marina stavnichuk who is a high-class constitutional lawyer she understands that constitutional amendments proposed now are very ineffective inefficient and she officially st stated this we had several meetings with Nate with her and started cooperation but at the moment we are going through reformatting and in fact now the powers that be started to create a pocket communities uh, public that will delve into unrealistic reforms all the meetings of the president are pocket meetings this is absurd uh, you know there's an order of questions just think no no time uh, remained and they started to ask the questions that were uh, mostly f most frequently asked and there was no question about the east and this pocket public and the replacement that is taking place will conserve and preserve and will push us back several steps back and with these actions we will we'll bring the guys from the east when they end the war with the foreign enemy they will come here with arms in their hands and they will find support because 
In Ukraine, a true people's authority power should prevail, and the means of this power is territorial communities. Thank you, Nazar. Now I invite Yuri Kovalchuk, who will speak about humanitarian assistance and charity. Good morning. Good afternoon. I was an, org an organizer, coordinator of the medical unit uh, in the city council during my done, and, on, and then I had a, an idea to set up a charity fund with a goal to support citizens uh, whose uh, whose fathers had died, who became uh, disabled. Time went by, and uh, when uh, there was um, ATO, there were um, more problems uh, came up, and uh, we will we will think about uh, supporting uh, families and children of uh, of those uh, who died on Maidan on uh, in ATO who became disabled because uh, the state inherited a bad bad practice from the Soviet Union. Uh, they forget about our heroes. This is uh, somehow happened. Unfortunately, in legislation of humanitarian assistance and, and um, charity activity, not, nothing has changed in, in legislation about this. It's not as critical with the charity except some, some articles of the law on charity. Uh, article 2 in the law on charity, it says clearly that uh, the, the, the profit, which is uh, all like uh, some money gi given uh, by someone are uh, taxed uh, as, a, as an income tax. Because, uh, but this is nonsense because uh, someone who, who donates money, he, a donator, is al uh, already paying an income uh, tax. But if it is uh, more than 1,700, uh, it is taxed. And under it is not taxed. One uh, one guy called me Sotnikov. Uh, he his father died. I just uh, was planning to do that. He told me that you will help uh, to Maidan people. I told him, look, I, I told I am ready. I'm just planning to do that. Nothing is ready. He told, you see, we have uh, five children. And our uh, father died. He was the only one who could uh, support the family. But there are more stories like that. Uh, but nobody's uh, talking about that. As to humanitarian assistance, the the notion is distorted. I don't know why. Charity and humanitarian assistance and um, charity, char charity people, those are who, who uh, give their property, money, etc. Humanitarian assistance, that's, that's assistance which, which come from abroad. Now we have a problem with humanitarian assistance from abroad. So, they want to tax to tax everything, including hu humanitarian assistance, because our uh, legislation is not harmonized, uh, and uh, on security on issues like uh, health care, security items. Uh, I speak to a lot of volunteers because I sent, sent a lot of medicine uh, from uh, the city council of Kiev uh, to ATO, and I was impressed. They took uh, to, uh, to brigade uh, 79 um, uh, health uh, medicine and something else. And somebody from uh, chiefs uh, from battalion, who, uh, who he told it would be very sad if we if we didn't have volunteers. And there was one more collision on on the Polish border. They stopped. Twenty twenty apostles with. Uh, bulletproof jackets and with helmets and volunteers, uh, they smuggle what, what is needed. The state doesn't do anything. The government doesn't do anything. I read an article uh, last week about 1.5% uh, 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 tax uh, for the war. And there was a phrase which killed me. Ukrainian people must uh, support, uh, must maintain a Ukrainian army. I have a logic. Uh, Question: Who does it now? Is it not Ukrainian people? Ukrainian people. That's it. From socks to heat, heat visors. Uh, all of that is provided by Ukrainian people. How? That 
that doesn't matter. So I have a question. Why do we need Ministry of Defense? Why do we need a Department of Logistics support in the Ministry of Defense and who don't perform that duty? We pay all the taxes. If you remember, when Ahmed was asked to, to, to support refugees from the East, he told, I will not do that. I pay taxes. If uh, all of us, we don't, if we don't pay attention, if we don't uh, force cabinet of ministers, if we don't uh, force the parliament and all to take decisions, we will not get the result we want. At the meeting of, uh, of uh, UN Security Council, the chief of the uh, coordination department uh, on humanitarian issues, John King, this is what he thought. Humanitarian assistance must be not must not be uh, uh, must not must not be taxed, uh, and we should speed up the process of ratification of agreement between uh, UN. Ukraine can simple, simplify procedures of uh, bringing necessary items, uh, humanitarian items, uh, to Ukraine. Russia announced that, that they would uh, bring uh, humanitarian assistance, and our government doesn't do anything, as if they they keep some kind of a hole for them to uh, bring their troops and uh, and uh, for them to say that this is humanitarian assistance. Thank you. If there is any question, please. No questions. I have a question as a moderator. How, if not to solve, how to improve the situation? Look, reanimation package of reforms. There is such a group, and uh, there are experts in that group, and uh, those who develop draft laws uh, for the parliament, they are ready to help, but they are not invited. So there should be a committee set up. At the cabinet of ministers, there was a commission or a committee on humanitarian issues. Now they don't have that committee. The cabinet of ministers said, don't work on that. So and there is a collapse. and. With medicine, they they approved tax uh, for 30 percent uh, for medicine, but uh, providers uh, of uh, companies from abroad they said that that tax uh, should be seven seven percent. So this way, uh, f f medicine cannot be brought uh, to uh, Ukraine. We cannot bring some uh, medicine which is under license, and every, uh, we need that uh, f that. Uh, Preparation. It, it licenses all over the world, and it was that it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have a license here, and then nobody gives that license, and nobody explains why. And uh, they say we need to make a study. You think uh, you think our technologies are better, and uh, you think they do? Uh, they have not tested it. We discussed uh, this issue with uh, Mr. Uh, with the Minister of Healthcare. He told that all preparations should be registered, should go through the procedure of, of, uh, of reg registration. They don't do that. Why do we need the state committee uh, which is responsible for that? In addition to that aspect, what else can be improved? Because we have the war, the necessary decisions uh, to defend our people, life of our people, and health they should be passed in the parliament uh, urgently. Uh, they, they don't do that. I don't know why. Any, any question? OK, no questions. Thank you very much.